Hi, uh, good morning. So my name is Yoshinori. So I'm a production engineer at Meta. So not previously it's Facebook. So I used to be a long time, uh, I worked for long years for database communities. Uh, I started as an Oracle DBA. And about 18 years ago, I joined MySQL company as a MySQL consultant and spent several years. Then the MySQL company was acquired by some microsystems, then Oracle. Then later, I joined Facebook and I relocated to the US and joined uh, Facebook and worked as a MySQL uh, PE, the production engineers. So now I'm a tech lead of the MySQL team and uh, so spent lots of time for as an online database uh, like LoxDBs. So today I'm going to talk about uh, online database uh, uh, SRE's common challenges like reliability, the performance, and uh, consistency. The consistency is a relatively interesting topic for database. So everyone expects a database returns the correct data. So it, it shouldn't return the wrong data, but actually it's, it's pretty hard to guarantee that. So uh, we cannot uh, build the best database, but uh, at least we can help to make, make it work better. So I'm going to talk about these uh, stuff. So I have, this talk has uh, three parts. One is uh, general database architectures, so how modern databases uh, look like. And uh, the second, I'll talk about reliability and performance issues. And then later, I'll talk about the bunch of correctness uh, stuff. So the, the modern database, or the, uh, the, nowadays, the people use replication in the database environment. So the replication means uh, MySQL, uh, I, a uh, bunch of my slides have a MySQL as an example, but I, 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 uh, I try to be neutral, so it can be applied to any database. But uh, generally, it's a, uh, we need a database redundancy. So if you have only one database instance, then if it's gone, then you lose data. So, so you, we cannot operate like that. So we need redundancies, and replication is the one of the ways to achieve that. And uh, replication has several types of architectures, but two major architectures, it's one is a prim single primary and multi-replica database, like this picture. So there's only one primary instance that accepts lights. Uh, so all lights go to the primary instance, then it's replicated to replicas. Another architecture is called a multi-primary, the multi-replica model. So there are multiple primary instances and that they uh, serve lights and uh, replicate each other. So there are two different models, but the vast majority of the databases uh, adopt a single primary and multi-replica model because uh, multi-primary is really hard to operate in reality. So, for example, if you update the same key and into two different databases, and if you update the same counter, then how do you merge these results together? And how, how do you take backups for the multi-primary uh, instances? How do you restore them? So there are a bunch of consistency challenges. So uh, at Meta, so we operate a single primary and multi-replica database, and uh, I think it's majority of the people use that. And when operating a uh, replication models, uh, applications need to talk to database, but it needs to know the which database to talk. So uh, normally so we have a discovery service, a naming service, kind of DNS. And uh, looking up by name, then it's uh, like looking up the primary instance location, then it returns the uh, host name and the port numbers. Then it remembering in the cache in the application side, then talking to the actual instance like primary. Yeah, this is a basic of the replication architectures nowadays. And sharding and replica said, so the, for example, Meta has a billions of the Facebook uh, users, and apparently the single database cannot host the, all of them. So we split uh, databases, so it is called sharding. And uh, each shard, uh, we call it replica set, but each shard has a primary, the single primary and multiple replicas. And in this example, it's like a use, uh, splitting by use IDs, and use IDs from 0 to 99 uh, going to uh, replica set 1, and 100 to 199 going to uh, replica set 2, so like that. And sharding uh, can be done by a bunch of uh, well-known algorithms, 
like hash or range of mapping tables. And uh, at metas, we use hash, but uh, it's well distributed. So we, we want to uh, distribute well. Uh, so that's why we adopted that. But uh, if you want to query for the different users, like different sharding keys, then it's a bit complex, uh, harder for range scans across multiple sharding keys. The range scans, uh, it's also relatively easy to control, but you need to keep in mind that uh, if you range by uh, some uh, hot keys, like, for example, if you uh, split a uh, shard by timestamp, then almost all data is stored in the newest shard, and that shard can be uh, hugely overloaded. So you need to be careful about picking the range keys. And mapping table is uh, the most flexible way, like uh, having a mapping table and defining which user is going to which shard. But that means uh, you have to keep the mapping table uh, and you have to maintain that. And, uh, and if you cache the mapping table in the applications, how to keep it consistent is also challenging. And also, the, uh, once we define sharding keys, it's re really hard to change later. So, so that's a uh, common uh, challenge of the sharding keys. And also, the database client has a need to be aware of the sharding key and replicate ID mapping. So that's defined in the discovery service. Uh, Multi-availability zones. So this pick, uh, was uh, picked from our the corporate website. So sorry for so it's obvious that we don't run the uh, database in the Australia. But uh, uh, normally, the single region is it's uh, if we operate in the, within the single region, so if the region goes offline, like a disaster happening, then we cannot operate. So the, nowadays, many companies operate with uh, redundant uh, replicas across multiple regions, like multi-availability zones. So in this example, the Northwest uh, the US has a primary instance, and uh, multiple replicas across the uh, West Coast uh, East Coast and Europe. So this uh, geo replication is a relatively common architecture nowadays. And normally the primary instance sends binary uh, replication logs uh, to many replicas. So in this case, there are five replicas. So the primary instance has to ship the replication logs to five different places. So it, the primary instance is more expensive because it needs to ship the replication logs. And most likely, it needs to compress because the geo network is relatively expensive. So this means, uh, so actually, the meta has many tens of the data centers. But actually, we cannot uh, have a uh, tens of databases replicas because it's too expensive. And the primary instance is very overloaded uh, to ship. So ten, uh, the replication logs to tens of the replicas. So we, we don't operate like that. We have a relatively limited number of uh, replicas and uh, keep the primary instance relatively uh, lightweight. And also, the, uh, if you operate with a smaller number of databases, so make sure that application servers tolerate with uh, higher latencies. So for example, US West Coast and East Coast, it has about 50 to 70 milliseconds latencies. And West EMEA has uh, over 100 milliseconds. So that latency is quite high. So making sure to tolerate uh, to higher latencies. So these are the database architectures. So this topic is more about database internal, the data format structures. So B3 database structure, index structure, was the most common uh, it's, it's still by far the most common architectures, but nowadays it's uh, LS, another structure called log structure merge. LSM is also getting popular, so I, I'd like to talk to uh, these structures. So B3 is uh, the tree-based structures and uh, consisting of a branch and leaf, and the leaf node, the bottom uh, layer, having uh, almost all data. So this is a common uh, structures. And uh, there are several variations like clustered index, but almost all leads and the writes uh, need random access. So uh, this example is uh, having a message table uh, with a user ID index. 
and the storing the user ID 31 and 10,000. So actually, the data is ordered by the index. So the 31 is happening on the very uh, first stage, and the 10,000 is in the later stage. So this means, uh, sorry, each data is stored in different blocks. And uh, to modify, to insert that, the, you have to read the block, which is random read, and updating, then writing back. So all, actually, almost all access is uh, random reads. And uh, random reads is uh, relatively uh, slow for hard disk drive. So uh, back in the days uh, when SSD was not common, then the database uh, the running on hard disk drive was very slow. So you need a big the memory to cache the most of the working set. So nowadays, uh, you, uh, the SSD is a majority for online database. So this is uh, getting much better for B3. So LSM is a log structure merge tree is uh, emerging the structures. Uh, so LogsDB is one of the databases adopting that architectures. But uh, uh, also the popular database called HBase is also adopting that. So compared to B3, so LSM is uh, more optimized for lights and the space. So almost all uh, requests are going to a memory structure called memtable and uh, log logged in uh, transaction logs. And when memtable gets filled, it's flushed uh, to create uh, data files uh, so called SSD file. And when there are many SSD files created, then another process called the compaction is happening to merge them to create a more optimal data files. So this access, uh, uh, data access is almost everything is sequential compared to B3's random reads and writes. So it's more uh, optimized for IOs. And uh, also, it compresses very well. So generally, the, compared to B3, it saves space a lot and it writes less. But on the other hand, so almost all reads have to go to many files. So that's much more expensive. So it's a really trade-off. Uh, so uh, people uh, who want a good enough read performance generally pick B3. And people who want to optimize space is uh, picking the same uh, tree structures. So this is a. Uh, uh, Meta's the largest database called UDB, so UDB at Meta. So actually, this is published in the paper as well. But UDB is a Meta's a social graph database running on top of MySQL. And we actually patched MySQL to support uh, LSM, the RocksDB database. So actually, actual database structure is uh, LSM, uh, not P3. And it's geo-distributed, so R1, R2. So these are different regions, so geo-distributed. And single primary and multi-replica. Because as I said, the uh, primary is really hard to solve consistency issues. So we operate with single primary model. And uh, we have only one copy per regions for geo-distributions uh, and trying to keep uh, the number of instances relatively small. And as I said, we use LSM3. And so, yeah, so we, our UDB is really space bound, so that's why we uh, picked this, uh, we decided to pick LSM. But that means the reads become more expensive, but uh, we actually have a big uh, caching service uh, called Tao uh, running uh, in front of MySQL database. So many read requests uh, hit in Tao. So actual database, the read on write, write workloads is pretty moderate. It's, it's not huge read intensive database. So that's why the LSM worked pretty well. So that's our database architectures. But yeah, so these are the relatively modern, the newer the database architectural topics. But next, uh, I'd like to talk more of the details about the reliability and performance and correctness uh, topics. So especially the reliability part. So as I said, so we typically operate with single primary and multi-replica database. So that means the primary instance becomes single point of failures. So if primary instance dies, then not, uh, writes cannot be accepted. So that, that means you really need to keep the primary instance highly available. 
So how to make that? So I'd like to uh, talk about that first. The another common reliability issue is overloads. So people sometimes send really expensive queries and taking the database servers down. So the how to find the overloads and how to mitigate quickly. So, so these two topics I'd like to discuss. Uh, so the primary instance uh, the, has several issues, but single primary multi-replica database means uh, there is only one primary instance. And there are multiple reasons that you may want to move that primary instance to elsewhere. Like when you want to upgrade database or upgrade kernel. So if you, have a, if you need a scheduled hardware maintenance, then you need to move that primary instance to elsewhere. So this is called uh, maintenance. This maintenance operations is called live primary promotions. So live primary promotions means it's, it's relatively straightforward, but basically first just refuse writes. So in MySQL terms, there, there's a variable called read only. So flipping the flag to read only call one, then refusing all writes, then making the, the another replica, the, in this case, instance two, to making it as a primary, then read only call zero. That means users can write. And the uh, applications going to uh, all the primary is getting refused because read-only flag is enabled. Then uh, updating the discovery service, the, the discovery service then pointing the primary instance location to the new instance, the instance two. So then applications finally can talk to a new instance by going straight to the new primary. So these are the basic steps of the live primary promotions. So this was a MySQL example, but basically any other uh, database uh, operates like that. And uh, if you automate pretty well, then entire steps can be done pretty quickly. So like less than one second is quite common. So this is a, a live primary instance operations. So live primary instance, uh, live primary promotion is not a very difficult topic, but uh, uh, and there is a very complex topic called the dead primary the promotions. So if the instance, if the primary instance is dies, then you, you basically need to do the same step. So the allocating the new primaries and the going to allowing writes and upgrading discovery service then going to the new primary. So basically when the original primary instance dies, you uh, need the same step as a live primary promotion. But this is much more complex than the live primary promotions. So let me uh, explain several uh, issues uh, uh, caused from uh, dead primary promotions. So the biggest issue, is, uh, apparently the most complex issue, is uh, it's called a split plane. So when original primary instance dies, uh, you need to flip, that you need, uh, need to promote a new primary. But what if the original primary instance was actually still alive and serving rights? Okay. Uh, then the applications may continue to write to uh, original instance. For example, if application remembers the caches, the original uh, primary instance location, then it, still, it may still go to uh, the old primary. And if all primary accept writes, then it's written to the instance one and uh, returns arc. So users will uh, perceive that the writes are uh, successful. But actually, uh, this data never goes to new primary. So that means that all uh, successful writes are lost. So this is called a split plane. And uh, it's actually data loss. So it's a big uh, production issue. So we really need to avoid this scenario. And, uh, because uh, fixing consistency, the conflicts later, is almost impossible. So, so we really need to avoid that. Uh, so actually, nowadays, there are several uh, well-known uh, solutions for that. Uh, the most uh, well-known uh, approaches is using a consensus algorithm like LAFT or Paxos. 
So there are multiple databases uh, adopting the model. So like a MySQL group replication, so a modern distributed databases like Spanner, the MongoDB, or several new SQLs. So the consensus means the, it requires to uh, acknowledgement from a majority of the participants. So in this case, uh, there are three participants. And uh, it requires to act, for, uh, yes, votes, to act from uh, two instances. So otherwise, it, it refuses to, uh, accepting rights. So with this model, so that primary instance was uh, supposed to be dead. And if an application is going to the old primary, it needs to uh, getting a majority uh, of the yes votes. So this means uh, from a uh, new primary or replicas. And, uh, when the new primary takes over, then it's on, on these two instances. So the dead primary instance can never have a uh, majority. So that means it's, it's a, in the pro protocol levels, it's guaranteed that no rights go to the old primary. So this was a, 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 well, not a consensus, how consensus algorithm works. And uh, at Meta, so we, adopt, we are adopting the implementing raft in the MySQL, so which is similar to MySQL group replications. But uh, yeah, basically we are switching to consensus algorithm uh, for our MySQL footprints. And before we adopted raft, uh, we implemented a custom uh, kind of node fencing uh, implementations so that making sure that that primary is really uh, shut down, for example. But yes, yeah, so this is a pretty challenging topic. So another uh, different uh, challenge is uh, the machines, the primary instance is uh, not healthy, but it cannot be detected as failures. So like a database can uh, degrade by a bunch of reasons, like a degraded hardware, so saturated networks, or the disk failures. Like uh, we had a bunch of uh, instances that the uh, databases, uh, flash storages, uh, latencies going spike, for example. Then these are typically reported as the client errors, like uh, database connections, the database becomes slow down, so every query is starting to take uh, seconds, or, and the connections are ex exhausted, for example. So, but database instance is responding, so that means uh, database cannot be all failed over. So uh, in such cases, it's the alerts are fired, like too many errors to the uh, DBAs, and we react and checking the host, and if the host is apparently uh, broken, so we, then we issue the manual live primary promotions to fail over. But uh, this was the broken hardware is one of the common reasons that uh, uh, we, we are hitting the issues. So we invested quite a lot for automatically detecting the hardware errors, like uh, uh, CPUs or memory bandwidths so, or uh, flash disks. And uh, then the replacing the hardware and uh, triggering the live promotions. Uh, the hardware is not the only reason that uh, the database becomes unreliable. So like uh, database itself may get stuck for example, uh, connections may go through, but uh, reads and writes get stuck by, uh, because of the database internal uh, mutexes, for example. Or connections and reads go through, but writes stuck. Or replications uh, get stuck and keeps lagging. So there are a bunch of uh, issues uh, can happen because of the database healthiness issues. So uh, we invested quite a lot about the, such a, for detecting such stuck database instances. For example, we have a heartbeat uh, detections, then connecting a writing to the primary and verifying it succeeds within uh, several seconds, and also checking replica logs. The cascading failover, so if you have one primary instance and four replicas, and uh, when primary instance dies, then we expect that automatically failed over. So in that case, after failed over, uh, there's a new primary, and uh, th there will be three replicas, so because one instance was gone. And what happens if the 
uh, new primary, it also becomes healthy, uh, unhealthy. So for example, if it dies, then if it, if it triggers another failover, then there will be only the one primary and uh, two replicas. And if you have a, then if the primary goes down, then the number of replicas keep down, uh, going down. So then eventually, there is no replica, uh, there's no redundancy. So uh, we really want to avoid that scenario because uh, if we lose all instances, then we lose data. So, uh, so there should be uh, legit legitimate reasons to promote. Like, so typically, it's if, when databases are overloaded, that's not a very good reason to fail over because if the database is overloaded, then even if you promote, then the new instance is very likely to get overloaded again. So you, you have to fix the original application problems. So then uh, so check the database and if you can connect, but if the connection failure reason is uh, like too many connections, uh, application overloads, then you shouldn't uh, do a failover. So for example, MySQL has uh, several ways to check that. So MySQL adopts an uh, admin port, so that means a connection port for uh, uh, DBAs. And you can check that port and uh, to see if it can be connected, for example. Then it's, uh, it, you can connect even if the database is overloaded. And also, it's good that to have put some intervals, like uh, when doing a debt primary promotion, then uh, not doing any further failovers for the next uh, 10 minutes or 20 minutes, for example or the keep the minimum number of instances. So uh, at Meta, so we have a concept of a primary capable instance. So we have uh, three or four of the primary capable instances across, the, for example, seven replicas. So that means even if we do promote many times, we still have uh, several instances uh, remaining. So at least we don't lose data for that. So database, uh, the fails over that we also uh, have the challenge that recovering the failed instances uh, quickly. So, uh, so the databases can fail, but many cases, in many cases, actually the database can restart uh, quickly uh, without any replacements. Like, if the, for example, MySQL, if MySQL process is killed, the, like a seg fault, then angel process called MySQL DSAFE automatically restarts the MySQL database. So in, in the best case, it can recover just in a couple of uh, tens or 20 uh, seconds. So that's really quick. And uh, or, uh, if the short network events, then the, uh, in, the uh, instance may be uh, failed over, but the original instance may recover quickly after the network uh, recovers. Yeah. So in that case, so we do, on the dead primary promotions, so we do failovers. But so when that primary instance comes back, so we want to recover as a replica so pretty quickly without replacements. So the point is, so if you operate with one terabyte database instance, and when primary instance fails over, so if you have to re uh, replace the entire one terabyte instance, then it may take one hour or two hours to uh, complete the replacement. But if you can reuse that instance as a replica uh, by uh, catching up from a new primary instance, then you can recover just a couple of seconds or minutes. So that's much faster than uh, replacing the entire database. So actually, we invested quite a lot to make it work. So the conceptually, it needs a uh, uh, architecture called uh, crash safe replications. So it uh, remembers the state, the globally unique uh, transaction state called GTID. And when uh, primary instance fails and recovers, then it remembers the GTID and the reco uh, recovering from the new primaries. And yeah, there are several other topics like uh, replica lags due to network. Uh, so uh, as I said, so we have uh, uh, instances in the US and Europe. And apparently, the network between US and Europe is slower than the local networks. So if you write uh, too much, 
and uh, through the local instances keep up, so you need to make sure that the far distant uh, replicas also keep up. So uh, you may need to throttle some, some of the lights to make sure that all replicas keep up. So uh, it's, this is a challenge of the, when uh, operating with the long distance networks. Yeah. So, so these are the reliability topics, uh, but also I'd like to discuss about the over so overloads is uh, uh, one of another the very common topic that uh, database uh, uh, for database reliabilities. Yeah. So uh, big reliability issues uh, happens if main databases are overloaded. Like uh, if the CPU uh, goes one hundred percent, the query tends to take longer than the, uh, longer time with overloads. And if hosts run out of memory then you may not even to access uh, to SSH. So you, you cannot even debug with that. So the how uh, can you mitigate if database is overloaded? Uh, and the, typically, the overload happens by, uh, from a bad SQL statement. So how to find them uh, effectively? So the common database overload happens when applications send really bad queries. So uh, applications send bad queries that like taking uh, one hour, for example, the one hour query, <laughs> and taking long time. So database is using a one full CPU core to serve that query. <laughs> then applications may retry. So like uh, many application logic have retried and make uh, the users may just uh, reload applications. Then that may send the another query. The another query also taking uh, one hour. So then, then using a one full CPU cores of the database and doing again, right, third and fourth and fifth. So the applications uh, repeat that, uh, retry that expensive queries and database is gradually using another cores and that eventually the database uh, the using all CPU cores when that becomes uh, uh, using 100% CPUs. So this is a common case of the data, how database becomes overloaded. And, but it basically it's triggered by uh, really bad queries from users. So another type of overloads that uh, users are writing too much or uh, users connecting uh, too many uh, too many connections. So especially nowadays, users use SSL to connect to a database. So under Handshake, SSL is uh, much more expensive uh, compared to uh, uh, non-SSL uh, connections, and they're using CPU for that. And uh, users uh, may write bad queries, but uh, actually it's a but query happens by, uh, because the database executes uh, very expensive uh, query plans. That means the users may intend to return just a couple of records, but uh, instead the database executes a full table scans, for example. So that typically happens when users unexpectedly write a bad queries. But that can happen uh, because of the database bugs, potentially. So. Uh, for example, we recently upgraded uh, from MySQL 5.6 to 8, so which is the newer MySQL version. And uh, we spent lots of time for fixing the SQL query plan regressions. So the MySQL que that's a good query in 5.6 uh, regressed in 8 by, uh, because the query plan slightly changed in MySQL 8. So that type of issues may happen, the database internals. So, so really, the, be careful about the database upgrades or downgrades. So that can, uh, and, but anyway, so uh, when executing bad queries, then the database can easily be overloaded. So when database becomes overloaded, so you, we really need to find the bad, uh, bad queries and uh, mitigate quickly. So any database has a bunch of uh, good tools to find that. So in the MySQL world, so there is a command, multiple commands like show process list, uh, printing the uh, queries taking a long time. And uh, we can aggregate by normalized queries. And we can also check the query plan uh, by explain. And uh, the newer MySQL version can e even show the query execution plan for the running queries. So if some queries are running uh, like one hour, you can explain for connection statement to print the how why this query is taking the one hour. 
And also, the, sometimes the databases are not always overloaded. So database may uh, be flat, uh, idle uh, for a long time, then some, sometimes then suddenly spikes like that. So in that case, uh, the manual, instead of manual monitoring, the, it can be uh, captured automatically. Like when database workload spikes, then uh, the database internal running threads in the MySQL terminology, it's uh, called a thread running. Uh, so there are many threads running. So, so we can monitor that. So we can check the number of the running uh, threads. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, and if it exceeds, then we can uh, exceed like 200 we, uh, to capture the uh, stack traces. So the common problematic queries are that, like scanning lots of records and returning few rows or the doing order bytes, or the other complex plans are called like non-coupling index range scans. So these types of scan queries are like a range scans for 1,000 records, and for each record, I'm looking up a primary key one by one. So that means eventually it uh, seeks uh, 1,001 uh, records, so that, uh, that's more expensive. So the, we need to find such of query offenders. So one of the good practice for us was uh, uh, adding uh, comments in the query, like uh, select something, some migration job, for example, or code points. Then when we find the bad queries, we can easily find the who are executing this, this query. Then we can easily find the, uh, the teams, for example, the on calls. Then we, we can uh, ping on calls and uh, hey, fix that. So uh, that's the additional hints to annotations for the who are executing is really helpful. Yeah. So yeah, reverting the bad diffs, and uh, the, also that we can kill the queries, uh, the scripting, the term, uh, terminating the bad queries. Or the, if the table is very small, you can potentially add index for that. So or the table at the index, so that, uh, that's a uh, relatively easy way to fix that. So for the prevention, so generally it's recommended to learn how index works, uh, the how to read the query execution plans. So the in increase, uh, improve the database literacy and the finding uh, the queries and then root cause uh, relatively easily. And also the restrict what uh, developers can do for example, in the UDB case, so we have a, a cache service called Tau. So the uh, users access to database by Tau APIs, and Tau only do a point lookups and a simple range scans. So there's a very little chance that users really write uh, custom bad queries. So yeah, uh, there are several other issues. Uh, as I said, the uh, regressions of database upgrades. When upgrading the database and the query plan may regress, or some reserved keywords uh, in the new, new database may uh, fail the old queries. So such a reliability issues is a common uh, challenge for the database upgrades. And also fleet management uh, that monitors uh, uh, the number of instances, for example, or the the basic uh, the metrics like a disk space, so making sure that uh, the host don't run out of space, or the 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 column the ranges like if you use integers, the to make make sure that the values don't overflow. So when you overflow the integers, it's really hard to extend the database on the fly. Yeah. So also the database takes backups, right? We, we take backups, but the application is not backup, right? So if you accidentally drop tables or delete many records, they are replicated immediately, so, so you, you lose data. So you need to take backups, but uh, you also uh, uh, do the backups. So uh, making sure that database can be restored. And if you can restore, then uh, invest in time for uh, how to restore them more quickly. Yeah, so the last topic, so I'd like to talk about the database correctness. So we have uh, five to 10 minutes. So yeah, uh, let's uh, explain that. So database correctness with replications, uh, 
So back in the days when there is no re replication, then we have to operate with full durability, so which means uh, F-sync on the database commit. So nowadays, with replication, you don't have to do that because <laughs> it's uh, replicated to other replicas. And uh, we also use a synchronous replication. That means when doing a transaction commit, then it's replicated to a, a, a near, nearby uh, logging uh, system called LBUs. So, so with synchronous replication, we, we really don't need to operate with full durability. Yeah. But uh, you have to make sure that keep database is consistent. So example of correctness expectations. So you, uh, there's no partial commit. Like if you, uh, ex, uh, before commit, uh, such data should not be visible, right? integrity. Or no data loss on the crash recovery or replication catch up. Or the, you shouldn't lose data on the dead primary or live primary promotions. Or the you sh data shouldn't be uh, drift drifted between the instances. And also, the internally, the database has a indexes, like primary or secondary keys. And these should be consistent. Like, uh, low counts between primary and secondary keys should, uh, should be the same. Right? And uh, backups also should be consistent. So you, 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 you should be able to restore, but uh, that database has to be consistent. There are also uh, there are external systems like change data captures. So and, uh, each downstream services should be consistent with the database. Yeah. So the database uh, can be inconsistent by many reasons, like application errors. So if you uh, accidentally drop tables, then all replicas will be incorrected. So in that case, you, most likely you have to recover from backups. So, so that's why backup is very important. But without applications, then like random hardware errors or bit flips or database automation bugs such as failover scripts or database internal bugs. So there are many reasons that database may be inconsistent. So in ideal database, uh, should be able to find errors automatically and fix them. Uh, many times the database can do that, but not always. So uh, most databases have uh, checksums, so you need to make sure to enable that. Uh, and like a data file checksum or data block checksums, so replication checksums. So and they are validated on read paths. So uh, it makes sure to enable that, but it cannot find all of the uh, violations. Like, for example, if there are uh, corruptions in CPU or memory, then the corrupted data is, uh, record is written, and the checksum is calculated based on the corrupted data. So that means the checksum is valid, but the uh, data was corrupted. So we cannot, uh, it, it's a really, really hard case. So Rockstar recently implemented a concept called key value checksums so to make it better for detecting such issues. So yeah, so checksum validations, the bit flip uh, corruption may happen at many points like memory, the storage, replications, or when copying database to elsewhere, then uh, corruption may happen in between. So enable checksums uh, validations and uh, checks that, like a uh, data block checksums, it's validated on leads. The file checksums can be validated on the copy destinations. And replication log checksum can be validated on the replicas. Yeah. So when hitting check some errors, uh, you may try uh, the, un until the, uh, it succeeds. So that may work well with replications, but uh, for data blocks, it, it may not work. And uh, or returning errors to clients, or just aborting the database. So there are a bunch of ways uh, we can do that. But uh, at uh, Facebook, so we normally abort the uh, databases on errors, but we allow to switch the flags to, for example, switching to warning mode. Then the reason is when the database all uh, aborts, then there is a potential availability concerns. So if the database uh, becomes uh, the all fails, then if you know that which data is corrupted, we, uh, we may f want to fix quickly. So then, then in that case, we're starting the database in the maintenance mode, and uh, uh, then the finding the bad record, then pinpointly the deleting the record, uh, and uh, making uh, 
rejoining the production database again. So there are some uh, flexible uh, tuning options, but uh, making sure that you shouldn't uh, ignore the errors. Yeah, so there are a bunch of consistency, the potential issues, but uh, so the, for example, here's the example of the physical copy of the RocksDB. So the RocksDB, it's by default, it doesn't check the transaction log on the database open. So back in the days, we had an issue that when copying the database, we forgot to copy to the right head logs. Then the destination database uh, could be opened, but uh, later we found a bunch of the data inconsistencies because uh, uh, transaction logs were not copied. So the database uh, operate, uh, opened with incomplete data. So, so uh, that's really bad. So later we implemented more the strict tracking features to making sure that we uh, track all files on the database copies. So there are a bunch of options, but ultimately it's, uh, we uh, have uh, implemented a tool to the check correctness by scanning the entire database. So that's the uh, uh, most uh, accurate way to track the, uh, whether the data is really consistent. So this, the data correctness, uh, basically uh, comparing a two database instance, so starting with exactly the same transaction state. Then the scanning the all tables and the comparing the checksums. So it's basically doing a full table scan, uh, then comparing. And uh, optionally, we can run the same select statement with the same transaction state and then comparing results. So uh, anyway, so we have, uh, then when we have issues, we need to investigate the how, to, how do we root cause the problems. So pinpoints the difference, so which records are corrupted and identify the right copy of data, then collect evidence and look for suspicious events, and uh, transaction log, like a binary log uh, stream inspections, and compiling a theory to reproduce that. So this was an uh, example of the primary replica drift case. So uh, in this case, uh, all MySQL replicas stopped with errors that record was not found. So record was not found means a primary has a record, but uh, uh, so in this case, uh, it uh, updates. The so updates uh, succeeded on the primary uh, instance, but all replicas didn't have a record. So the, it failed so with the consistency errors. So in this case, we uh, inspected the keys, primary key, the findings, uh, uh, replication log, the binary log, and uh, the log histories to see how that original key was inserted. And uh, we, later we identified the bit flip, so that we decided to replace uh, replicas uh, by uh, sourcing from primaries. So there are several types of the, uh, data consistency issues, but uh, generally it's recommended to do a strict check so for detecting such cases. Yep. So there are a bunch of the database reliability topics, but this is the final slide about takeaways. So the reliability, the performance, and the correctness are the major challenges for database SREs, obviously. And, uh, but I strongly believe that understanding the database fundamental technologies, uh, like uh, indexing, the how to read the query execution plans, this will re really help for mitigating uh, any production issues more quickly. Yeah. But commonly, the primary instance availability and correctness is really important. So especially about how to correctly handle the debt promotions. So it, like a split plane is really a hot issues. So we really need to invest in the preventing that. And learn how to avoid, uh, find, isolate, and prevent bad queries. And also in the better data drift detections. That's a checksum, so a correctness check. That's a, I think the return on investment is, is really good, so I, I recommend that. Yeah. So that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>